I'm Georgina Hosang. Um, I'm a psychology lecturer at Goldsmiths University of London. I My research mainly focuses on the relationship between life stress and mental and physical illnesses. Um, and hopefully today we'll be talking about the London Mood Project, which we are leading at Goldsmiths, um, but we are collaborating with um, some researchers at Middlesex University and also um, University of Liverpool. The London Mood Project is designed to look at the relationship between mood and moving around different neighbourhoods in London. The exciting thing I think about the study is that some of the data will be collected using a iPhone app. So we will ask people to uh, use the app for seven days and the app will send prompts several times a day and at each prompt they will report how they're feeling but they'll also tell us a bit about their environment. So they'll take a photograph of the environment um, and they'll also tell us what they notice about their neighbourhood or their surroundings. Most of my work has been looking at life stress um, and mental and physical health um, issues. Originally I con conceptualised life stress as things that happen to us, so life events like bereavement or divorce um, or maybe um, childhood adversity, so nasty things that happen to you when you're a child. Um, and while I was working at Middlesex University I began um, working with Professor Tom Dickens who's an evolutionary psychologist and he is interested in the environment from a kind of completely different perspective and that really got me to thinking about the environment itself as a form of stress and together and uh, with Professor Tom Dickens and ProSocial Place, which is um, a consortia of practitioners and researchers, we are generally interested in um, the urban environment. One of the most robust findings um, within psychology is that um, we see significantly higher rates of mental health problems in urban areas compared to rural areas. And by mental health problems, we're talking about things such as schizophrenia and depression. But when you um, look into the literature in more detail, and even just the statistics, you even see variations in these rates within the city. So for example, somewhere like London, we see quite high rates of mental health problems in places like uh, Camberwell, but we see lower rates in places such as Hampstead. So that I find really curious. So in our study, we're interested in trying to find out why we see these differences. For example, are there specific environmental features that are most potent in eliciting these illnesses or their symptoms? Or are there particular features of the individual that make them more sensitive to their urban environment? So they're really the two main research questions for the London Mood Project. One of our collaborators, Professor Richard Bentel, he recently published a paper looking at um, social deprivation, stress and social support within the urban environment and how that relates to psychosis and things like having a lack of social support, so feeling isolated seems to be um, a factor that kind of mediates a relationship between urban environment and paranoia. So if for example, places like London, we have lots of um, people coming from abroad, for instance. So we have um, high rates of kind of Im high rates of immigrant groups, and you can imagine coming to a new city. It may be more difficult to kind of build social networks that are supportive um, and can create more um, feelings of isolation, for instance. So I think. Um, when we're talking about intervention work, for example, maybe we need to do more to kind of integrate um, people who are new to a city to try and support them and avoid these negative outcomes. So there, there are three stages, if you will. So if you were to participate, there's 
three sections. So the first is um, the baseline and at baseline we collect um, data um, on things such as mood, your thinking style, um, experiences, nasty things that may have happened to you in your life. Um, and then once you complete these series of questionnaires, uh, we then do the fun stuff. So we download the app onto your phone and show you how to use it. And then we send you on your way and you use the app for about seven days. Um, and as I said, with the app, you um, it prompts you several times a day. And at each prompt, when you first open the app, there's a GPS stamp of where you actually are. And then there are a series of questions about um, the context of your environment, so are you at work or are you at a cinema, for instance, who you're with, and then we ask you to take a photograph of where you are, which I think is very exciting. Um, and then there are a series of questions where you we ask you about your mood. So are you feeling happy? Are you feeling a bit nervous? Are you feeling worried, etc. And then the final stage of the app is where you will we ask you um, how nice, if you will, the environment is and why you think the environment is nice. And I think the important thing for us is we wanted people to be free to tell us what they notice about their environment. We have some ideas about what features of the environment are important, but I think it would be um, crucial for us to really kind of unpack what people actually think rather than imposing what we think on people so that's why we've left it as a kind of open text box. So we're hoping to recruit um, 320 participants and at the moment we've got about 30 participants so we've still got um, quite a few people to still recruit. Um, this is really a, if you will, a pilot project where we're just making sure the app works and to get a feel of the data and what types of associations we're able to uncover but our hope is that in the future we can just have the app on the app store and anyone can download it across the UK so it won't just be focused on London but just anywhere in in the UK and I think that would be um, give us some really really rich data but also be incredibly interesting and exciting. If people are interested in taking part in the London Mood Project, um, we have a website and I will give you the address. Um, or you can email the team at londonmoodapp at gmail.com. And we're also on Twitter, <laughs> uh, London at London Mood App. And we've also got a Facebook page. So there are a number of ways of contacting the team. And once you contact the team, um, someone will get back to you. Uh, we have a number of different um, inclusion criteria. So the um, eligible participants need to be aged 18 years or over. They need to have an iPhone or iPad because the app, unfortunately, is specific to um, Apple products. So in the future, we hope to have an, an Android app, but at the moment it is just for Apple products. Um, and. For this specific project, we are only including people that don't have a history of any mental health problems. Um, so they're the three um, criteria that um, eligible participants need to meet. And uh, what do you count as living in London? Uh, so we also include suburbs, oh, okay. yes. I think the, the most important thing for us would be, even if you live on the outskirts of London, it's about traveling in to London or, diff or moving around the London area. So we are currently, we're recruiting um, staff and students from various universities in London, but we are also um, reaching out to different community groups as well, because we would like to have a, a more representative sample than just students. So obviously as a psychologist, it's great to have um, access to a convenient sample, but there are obviously various biases that are associated with that.
what do you say to people when they're worried about uh, confidentiality? Because you're recording their location. Mm -hmm. That might be something people feel a bit uneasy about. Yes, I can definitely appreciate that. Um, so all of the information, so first of all, um, we, all of the data is stored in an anonymized fashion. So everyone's allocated an ID number. So their personal information is not linked to um, our database, they just have an ID number. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that the database is completely secure and it's not um, accessible to the general public. It's password protected, it's encrypted. We've trusted our app developers to create a database that is solid and cannot be infiltrated by um, other powers that, that be. Um, so I'm confident to say that people shouldn't be worried. We're only going to analyse the data for research. We will not allow third parties to use the data for any other reasons. So yes, I hope that allays some of the concerns that people may have. So how are you going to um, deal with all this data when it comes in? Uh, I think that is an excellent question. <laughs> and I think that um, we'll, we'll have to do a lot of collaborative work because there will be a lot, one high volume, so lots of data, but also very rich data. So I said earlier on with um, we're interested in the environment and we're actually collecting the data on the environment in so many different ways. So we'll have the photograph, so we'll need to find ways of coding the photographs. Um, we'll also have the free text box where people report what they notice about their environment. And then we also have the GPS stamp. And from the GPS stamp, we can link it to things like Google Street View to get an idea of what the, the neighbourhood looks like. And we also can link it to um, the index of multiple deprivation, which is um, information that you can get from the Office of National Statistics, um, which gives you um, indices about particular areas like access to healthcare, crime rates, etc. So actually, we're going to have quite a lot of rich data that we'll need to we can address a number of different research questions in innovative um, and um, reliable ways, I think.